Alright, what it do, what it do, what it do. You are now back with your boy Tay. This is the Tech with Tay channel. I may have to switch the name up because now we're going to be expanding a little bit like I said on the last video. Uh, well, I think the video before last or whatever. I believe you, you remember that if you watched it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be watching Napoleon Hill. This is like my personal development series that I'm going to be doing. And uh, pretty much it's going to be... Uh, we're going to be breaking it down in Ebonics. So this dude is like from the 1920s, 1930s. This video was recorded back then. So we're using like a lot of old English and everything of that nature. So uh, we're going to break it down into modern day slang, modern day English, and just make it super easy to understand. I watch a lot of this stuff. Uh, I don't really mind it, but I know it's not easily digestible to some people. It took me a while to kind of, you know, digest it and be like, all right, like I could just listen to this dude. But uh Let's get it popping. Let's do it. We're going to watch a little bit and I'm going to break it down and pretty much make it in layman's terms, if you will. Uh, so, yeah, let's get it started. My name is W. Clement Stone, a general manager of the Napoleon Hill Associates. It is my privilege to introduce you to Napoleon Hill. How do you do? I'm very happy to have this personal visit with you. Won't you be seated, please? And uh, now, may I request that you forget all your problems and just relax while I bring you the master key with which you may unlock the door to any opportunity that your mind can conceive. Uh, the master key uh, consists of 17 principles, the first of which is uh, definiteness of purpose. Uh, right here at the beginning of our visit, I'm going to make you a promise. If you will decide definitely what you want most during your entire lifetime and write it down on paper so that I can read it, I will give you the master key with which you may open the door to the attainment of your desires, whatever they may be. Uh, the exact moment when I will deliver this master key to you will depend entirely upon when you are ready to receive it. All right. So I believe you can see what I'm saying about uh, you know, it's like old English, it's back in the day, they just like speaking the same language but different. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, pretty much, you know, that's his like right hand man, W. Clement Stone. Uh, you know, he's like pretty much, this is my boy, Napoleon Hill. Uh, he about to drop some game on y'all. So, uh, let's go ahead and introduce my boy. Uh, so then, you know, Napoleon Hill comes in. Uh, how do you do? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so pretty much what he said is, uh, you know, shoot, what's good, nigga, shit, sit your ass down, let's go ahead and, you know, speak about some real stuff right now. So, uh, yeah, pretty much he's telling you that, you know, he's going to be giving you the master key to success, uh, and pretty much, you know, you can receive that key when you're ready for it. So he's going to be going over 17 principles, uh, all success principles. And uh, every single one of them has value, has meaning, and uh, can actually improve your life. Just one of them can improve your life. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what he's saying. He's saying, uh, you know, the first key or the first lesson is definiteness of purpose. So definiteness of purpose is going to be, uh, like he said, if you can write it down and you can see it and you believe it, uh, pretty much you can have it and you can obtain that thing. Uh, so let's keep on moving. Uh, this is the first of 13 messages that I will deliver to you. Now, in each message, I will describe the master key in terms that you will understand, if you are ready to understand. And now I shall give you the first cue as to the nature of the great master key, which has been responsible for all the great successes in every calling, in every part of the world. Uh, please listen carefully to what I have to say, because you may discover the secret of the master key in this first visit. You may get your first cue as to the nature of the great master key when I tell you that psychologists have discovered a natural law which is the very foundation of all personal successes. And I can describe it to you in one short sentence so you can understand it. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. But of thinking first, let's say Edison did to understand. And just relax. Holding Hill Associates. As your key in this first visit, so leave, the mind can achieve. 
All right, so maybe I lied. I thought he said 17, but it's 13. Uh, you know, lessons that, he going, that he's going to be going over. So uh, pretty much, uh, yeah, what he was saying is, uh, you know, psychologists have come up with something that pretty much whatever the mind can conceive and believe. So whatever you, whatever thought that you come up with and you wholeheartedly believe it and you really truly in your mind believe that you can get there, uh, pretty much you can do it. So this is actually like a scientific study uh, that whatever, you know, you are thinking about and you actually believe it, you can actually do it. And uh, I truly believe that and it's scientifically proven. Uh, so yeah, he said he's going to give you like one of the first cues. Uh, I hope you caught the cue. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of cues going on, but uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. So whatever you think, you can do it if you really truly believe it. Isn't that a profound statement? You will notice that it says nothing about uh, the need for education, but simply that whatever your mind can conceive and believe, your mind can achieve. Now, if you want evidence that the mind can achieve whatever the mind can conceive without the benefit of formal education, you only have to remember that Thomas A. Edison conceived the idea of becoming an inventor and lived to become the world's greatest scientists in the field of invention with only three months of common school education. When I first heard Andrew Carnegie describe this natural law, which makes it possible for you and I and everyone else to write his own price tag in life and attain it, I became so enthused over it that I began to search for the power back of it. And my curiosity led me finally to the discovery of the master key which I shall reveal to you if you are ready to receive it. My search led me to the study of the spiritual forces with which all of us are blessed. And it was in this field that I came upon a clue which has enabled me to help millions of people to find their earthly destinies. I want to describe my discovery in the simplest terms possible because it will reveal to you why it is true that whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve, regardless of how many times you may have failed in the past or how lofty your aims and hopes may be. I All right, so yeah, he's pretty much just, you know, pretty much reiterating what he was saying about the whatever the mind can conceive and believe. Uh, so pretty much like a bad story, he was like hired by Andrew Carnegie. That's why he was talking about, uh, you know, when he was working with him and everything of that nature, like how he started seeing these things and, uh, came up with these beliefs and started just learning. He actually interviewed, like, uh, I believe, like, over 500 people that were, like, really successful uh, and everything of that nature. So he pretty much uh, learned from all of them and pretty much took all that he learned and pretty much put it and packaged it. And that's how you get Think and Grow Rich. That's how you get uh, Laws of Success. That's how you get all of his, like, great books that he has. And, uh, you know, this video here. And uh, he used to do lectures and everything of that nature. So uh, he pretty much was hired by Andrew Carnegie. Uh, was like working for him for I think like more than 20 years. Uh, and just interviewing everybody that was successful. Because Andrew Carnegie was like the wealthiest man in like the world at the time. And so uh, yeah, he had access to all these people to uh, get all this information and everything of that nature. So uh, yeah, let's keep it pushing. I got my first fleeting glimpse of the profound law which provides the means by which we may choose our own purpose in life and attain it, while I was being coached by Andrew Carnegie during the organization of the Science of Success philosophy. I had just finished telling Mr. Carnegie that I feared he had uh, chosen the wrong person to give the world the first practical philosophy of personal success because of my youth, my lack of education, and my lack of finances. Well, at this point, Mr. Carnegie delivered a lecture that I shall never forget because it changed my entire life and paved the way for my helping to change the lives of millions of people, some of them not yet born. Let me call your attention to a great power which is under your control, said Mr. Carnegie, a power which is greater than poverty, greater than the lack of education, greater than all of your fears and superstitions combined. It is the power to take possession of your own mind and direct it to whatever ends you may desire. 
All right, so I forgot something as well. So he said, you know, before I stopped the last time he was talking about, that's when he pretty much found out about uh, spiritual forces. And everybody not, might, might not be into spirituality and everything of that nature. But uh, that was something that he said he learned from Andrew Carnegie. And then, you know, he went into, you know, how he was working with Andrew Carnegie and everything in that little clip. Uh, and then pretty much was saying, you know, again, Whatever your mind can conceive and all that kind of stuff, he's pretty much reiterating on that and pretty much locking that down. This is the first video, so he pretty much is like laying the bases right now and now not going too in depth into like different things that he's going to be talking about, but he's pretty much just laying the, uh, the groundwork right now. So uh, spiritual forces is something that he said that he was, uh, you know, uh, I guess brought, brought to light, brought to his light, brought to his uh, attention, his view. Uh, when working with Andrew Carnegie. This profound power, Mr. Carnegie continued, is the gift of the Creator, and it must have been considered the greatest of all of his gifts to man, because it is the only thing over which man has the complete and unchallengeable right of control and direction. When you speak of your poverty and lack of education, Mr. Carnegie explained, you are simply directing your mind power to attract these undesirable circumstances. Because it is true that whatever your mind feeds upon, your mind attracts to you. Now you see why it is important that you recognize that all success begins with definiteness of purpose. With Alright, so yeah, that was pretty, uh, he, he's now, he's kind of going into, you know, like pretty much what, uh, some things that's like real, real that's, that's going to be like going more in depth in. So it's pretty much saying what, what you think, uh, you know, like constantly and repeatedly, that's what you're attracted to. So, uh, you know, it's like if you're thinking about somebody and then, you know, they like call you on the phone or something, you know, it's kind of like you're thinking about it, it's like, oh man, I was just thinking about you, like, man, you called me. Uh, so he's saying like, you know, what you're thinking about, you're attracting to, you're pulling to you, uh, and so he's saying, yeah, if you're thinking negatively anything of that nature, then you're going to be attracting anything negative in your life. But if you switch that over to positive things, then you're going to be attracting positive things in your life and uh, greater opportunities and everything of that nature. The clear picture in your mind of precisely what you want from life. Uh, then Mr. Carnegie continued his speech with a description of a great universal truth which made such an impact upon my mind that I began then and there to give myself a new outlook on life and set up for myself a goal so far above my previous achievements that it shocked my friends and relatives when they heard about it. Everyone, said Mr. Carnegie, comes to the earth plane blessed with the privilege of controlling his mind power and directing it to whatever ends he may choose. But, he continued, everyone brings over with him at birth the equivalent of two sealed envelopes one of which is clearly labeled the riches you may enjoy if you take possession of your own mind and direct it to ends of your own choice. And the other is labeled the penalties you must pay if you neglect to take possession of your mind and direct it. All right, so yeah, he's pretty much saying when he started learning this stuff and really started to get a grasp of it, he pretty much said his bar like super 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 high because he, he's going like okay so this really is true so if that's the case i need to go ahead and set my sights to the highest thing i can possibly think of because if i'm thinking of it that means it will come maybe not now but eventually he, he knew he was going to get it so he said his family his friends everybody was looking at him crazy <laughs> they like dude what are you talking about uh just to let you know he, he has like not a lot of education i think he like probably went to like one year or two years of high school. He was from like an uh, old back country in like uh, Virginia, Wise, Virginia, Wise County, Virginia, I believe. And so uh, he, you know, his family is like, dude, like you have no chances of doing what you're saying you're doing. But he's like, he's learning from Andrew Carnegie and he's learning that he actually can do these things. So uh, that's pretty much what he was saying there. Then he said, you know, we come into life with pretty much, he said, two sealed envelopes. So if you look at it like, let me see how I can fit this in like a, pretty much you got a bad envelope and a good envelope. Let's just put it like that. Pretty much if you're thinking about the bad stuff, you're going to be attracting all that bad stuff. Then you can, you're coming in with a good envelope as well. 
And with that one, you'll be, you know, attracting all of the good things. And so pretty much it's up to you about what envelope that you're, uh, that you're opening. And uh, then you can just take it from there. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end this one right here. This is about 15 minutes. Uh, this is part one. Uh, let me know what you all think in the comments. And uh, let me know if you all want me to keep doing this. Or if there's anybody else that y'all want to see or videos that y'all heard of, anything of that nature. Uh, let me know. I'm going to keep this popping and keep on doing it. This has just been part one. As you can see, this video is, uh, you know, almost two hours long. So this might be, you know, like what, about eight, eight parts of this. So, uh, yeah, hope y'all enjoyed this. Hope it helped you. And, uh, yeah, till next time.